Well, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Kent Hall, and I'm the Chief Physician Executive for the Mohawk Valley Health System. And I want to thank you for uh, coming here and letting me talk to you today about some changes that are going on within our system. So, you know, as you know, since the beginning of this pandemic, we've been focused on the safety of our patients and our staff uh, as we continue to care for our community. Um, the safety measures that we've instituted including, uh, include doing uh, symptom checks uh, and temperature checks at the entrances to our facilities, uh, as well as making sure that everybody who enters our facilities uh, are wearing masks. Uh, we also have developed uh, what we call our safe path for care, which is a separate path for those patients who are coming in to get uh, to have uh, procedures, uh, elective procedures done, whether they're surgery or uh, other procedures. Uh, that that uh, path includes uh, having the patients have COVID tests done before they. Uh, before they come into the uh, facility, uh, they are then screened at the, at the uh, entrance uh, that, that they use. Um, they are also uh, given um, the opportunity to have a single caregiver who comes with them and escorts them at least to the entrance to the uh, path. Uh, we also do uh, a higher level uh, disinfecting and um, hygiene for those areas, and we actually use uh, uh, disposable um, instruments and uh, cleaners uh, in, in, in those areas to make sure that we are keeping that safe path as clean as possible. Um, as you know, the number of individuals in our community uh, who are testing positive for COVID-19 has been steadily increasing over the last several weeks. Uh, we have been aware of this. We have been watching it very closely. Um, and it is now getting to the point where we feel that we need to do additional measures in order to keep uh, our patients safe, our staff safe, and our providers safe. So with that, uh, we are instituting some changes effective uh, this Saturday. And those changes are that we will no longer be allowing visitors into our facilities except in special circumstances. Um, so one of the reasons why we have found that this is necessary is because in the, in the spring and early summer, we could, we could to a, a greater extent, uh, identify where patients were coming from that were having uh, COVID-19. They tended to be coming from residential uh, facilities uh, now, as you look through our community, what you find is that they're not coming from residential facilities, but they're really coming from home. They're, they're coming from private uh, residences, which means that they're contracting this disease um, not in cohorts, but actually out in the community itself. And so we need to be we need to uh, use a little bit of a broader brush in order to make sure that we are providing uh, a safe place uh, for uh, our patients and our staff and our providers. So effective on the on this uh, Saturday, as I said, we will be limiting um, the number of people that can come in as, as visitors. In fact, we're basically saying that we will have no visitors except for patients that are in uh, specific circumstances. So those circumstances include um, patients that are in the ICU, we will allow visitors there, however, only for two hours a day and only one visitor. And those two hours are going to be four, uh, four to six in the uh, late uh, afternoon. Uh, other times when people will be allowed to have visitors include uh, people who are uh, in, uh, getting toward the end of life, where we will allow a single visitor there. Um, and that will be uh, open to uh, different times, obviously, because those are not things that you can schedule. Uh, we will also be allowing uh, visitors for pediatric age patients, uh, for uh, women who are pregnant and in labor and delivering, um, and for people that have uh, intellectual or patients who have uh, intellectual or developmental uh, disabilities where a caregiver really helps to benefit uh, 
the care provided to, to those patients. So we will allow uh, 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 visitors then, um, the, those visitors will be allowed not just during two hours, but whenever the patient is here and deems that, that those visitors will be beneficial to the, to the patient themselves. Um, in our emergency departments, we also will be limiting uh, visitors uh, to, to a similar uh, cohort. So that is uh, pediatric age patients, uh, patients that are in a severe critical uh, condition. Um, and there's real, there may be a question about whether they might survive uh, through their uh, emergency department stay. Uh, and again, those that, that require um, or, or that have uh, intellectual or uh, developmental uh, disabilities and therefore they would need uh, to have a support person there. So those are the, those are the changes that we are seeing. Uh, that, that we are going to be making within our within our uh, system. Uh, again, the, the reason is we are doing this out of an abundance of caution for our uh, for our patients, for our staff, and for our providers to make sure that we can provide as safe an environment as possible for all concerned uh, while we continue to care for uh, this community.